from the root of the pond she's born on a lotus. So I first heard about Green Tara when I came to Chen Rizik in around 1995. There was a, a really large statue, life-size statue of Green Tara and I was very fascinated with the, the statue. It was very green. <laughs> And to think that there was some sort of relationship with the f a female Buddha. I did a 10-day Tara retreat. I found that there was a lot of tears during the retreat. It was sometimes quite difficult and a lot of emotion coming up and a lot of sort of working out who I was, uh, who Tara was, what the inspiration of Tara, that Tara gave us. Often we do practice best when we're having a hard time. It's like that's when you go to to get refuge or to get something that really helps you um, helps your mind. I didn't find like life was very easy. Everything I did was like a bit of a struggle. Green Tara is like a friend to me, and because I've done Green Tara practice every day for the last twenty five years or so, it's like an inner friend, somewhat something that's stable and that's something that really takes you along the path and really connects you with the guru, connects you with your own kind of liberation and also connects you with the, the sense of a community. In the mantra it resembles about um, overcoming our fears, the fear of flood, fear of snakes, the fear of delusion such as jealousy and anger, the things that really, you know, we all experience in all different ways about overcoming those fears. Om tare tu tare tu re so ha Om tare tu tare tu re so ha Om tare tu tare tu re so ha Om tare tu tare <laughs> there was something quite beautiful we did when in the Children's Dharma Club down at a teacher centre. We had this play about the, the eight great fears and we got all the kids to play one of the delusions. My daughter did the pride one <laughs> and she was looking at herself in the mirror and just saying, oh, I'm so beautiful, I'm so beautiful, oh, I'm so beautiful. And then, but this doesn't make me happy. And then she would go to Tara and she'd say to Tara, please help me. I have this thing called pride and I don't know what to do with it. And then Tara would give her advice around how to rejoice in others' good qualities. And this will help you overcome your pride. And it was just a really active, beautiful kind of um, experience. And the children, like I think for the whole of their lives, they've remembered that play. So she sits with her left leg drawn up, meaning that she's got control over her desire. Her right leg is out and means that she will stand and she will assist and help sentient beings. She's got this energy to get up and support and help. And then her left hand is at her heart and that's symbolic of taking refuge. And then she's green in colour, which like the green light, it's like we can go forward. It's about swiftness, it's about energy and it's about action. The earrings resemble patience. And then there's an open flower, which is like the present. And then she also holds the, the, the present as, a, as that flower is deteriorating. So that's the past. And then there's also the emerging, so the, the bud of the flower coming up, just about to, to come into to fullness. And so that, in a sense, is representative of impermanence, that we're all in this state of impermanence from past, present to future. And each is important, past, present and future, that we don't let go of either. It's just that or acknowledge it, all of those areas. So on both hands, she has two up, up to pile of flowers. Tara has these qualities and has these incredible energies that really connect us with something that can help 